How does it feel when you're winning and then you discover you got monsters? Because that's kind of the journey you've been on. And I want to go back and forth in this journey, but I want to start there. Like, what does it feel like when you're winning, you're succeeding, but then you all of a sudden go, I've still got monsters in me. You know, when you say and, and, and use the, the word monsters, just for, for clarity so people can understand, of course, we're talking about um, the, the different levels to you. Right. And um, within the levels that I've discovered in myself, uh, of myself, you know, you got your good versions and your bad versions. And the bad versions I refer to as monsters, but just because they're bad doesn't mean they don't have good quality. And when you're winning and you're succeeding, there's this idea that everything is right. There's this idea that perfection is now presenting itself and life moving forward is going to be just an easy road. Um, and it's not until you're in that position where you expect perfection and you think that, that you start to see the true problems and flaws really present themselves. And, you know, my monsters have been um, masked in disguise in, in various different ways, but I've been able to, to pinpoint them throughout the years um, because some of those monsters uh, grew, got stronger, um, developed. You, you're talking about the world of an ego, the, the, the idea of, of who you think you are versus what you are, or um, the idea of expectations and needs as to what you feel you need and what you have to have. That's a that's a monster that's feeding that, right? That, that engine of, well, now that I'm making money, this is what I should have, this is how I should look, this is how I'm supposed to be. That's a monster that you're feeding because ultimately you're buying in to something that you're creating. You're, you're enhancing this world of thought. And it's not till you sit down and you take a breather and you start to really kind of, you start to really figure out the true definition of happiness for you. You start to really understand uh, the adult that you have grown into and the level of maturity that has now, I guess you can say, have been banked inside the 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 human that you are. It's you're banking so much over the years, and ultimately you're, you're shaping and molding yourself into this this grounded, hopefully, this grounded individual that you're proud to look at in the mirror at the end of the day. I had to start to, I had to get to a place to where I was looking in the mirror and I was proud of what I was looking at. And I was okay with checking myself. I was okay with um, pointing out my flaws. I was okay with knowing what I do well and what I do wrong. And at the end of the day, there's no consequence to always improving. There's no consequence to growing. You're in a time now where uh, people almost frown upon uh, the world of growth. I embrace that. I embrace the world of correction. So the monsters and the world of how to tame them came from me understanding the different levels of monsters that have presented themselves to me over the years and me getting them to a point to where I put them in a place where I can control them. They're still there. They can rear their heads, but I can say, sit down. That's not necessary. That's not needed. And I can tell when one is trying to take me back to a place of old. But at the age 43, it's exciting to know that I've grown from so much. And, and you know, the, the world of want is significantly different than what it once was.